In this Blender tutorial, I will show you how to do mechanical rigging for beginners. And in this video, I will be rigging this robot arm 3D model here. So we're going to be mechanically rigging it so that you can select the objects and rotate them, and they would rotate how a real robot arm would. And with this type of rigging, we won't be using any bones. So we are going to instead be placing the object's origins so that the objects rotate where the joints are, and then we're going to be constraining the transforms of the object so that they can only rotate on a certain axis and then we'll be parenting different objects to other objects so when you move the lower parts of the arm it'll move other parts of the robot's arm and we're going to be rigging four different types of joints so we're going to be rigging this ball and socket joint here then we're also going to be rigging this elbow joint so this one just rotates back and forth then we're also going to be rotating this wrist joint and this one rotates around and then we're also going to be rigging the robot's claws here now if you'd like to download this robot arm to follow along with the tutorial then I'll have a free download of this robot arm on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the link in the description. And you can download the free blend file and then use it to follow along with the tutorial. And if you're downloading the robot arm model on my Gumroad store, you can throw a few dollars into the price box before purchasing to give me a little tip and help to support this channel. And then after you watch this video, if you'd like to learn more about mechanical rigging in Blender, then I actually have four different robot Blender tutorial series on my YouTube channel, and they're these ones right up here on the screen. So on my YouTube channel, I have complete tutorial series step by step in real time on how to create all these robots. And we use this mechanical rigging method with all of these robots. So if you'd like to check out those four different robot tutorial series, I'll have the links in the description. And if you enjoy my tutorials and you'd like to help support me and this channel, I will also have links in the description to my Gumroad store and my Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. Those are all great ways to help support this channel. And on my Gumroad store and Patreon page, you get access to 3D models and assets, tutorial files, procedural materials, and other Blender content on my Gumroad and Patreon. And if you join the YouTube memberships by clicking on the join button right down there next to the subscribe button, you'll be helping to support the channel monthly, and you'll get some cool perks here on YouTube. And you can also use the super thanks feature here on YouTube to send me a little tip, and I do appreciate your support. And then one more thing before we start, I wanted to let you know about the amazing Physical Starlight and Atmosphere Blender add-on. Physical Starlight and Atmosphere is an amazing Blender add-on for creating realistic skies and sky lighting. I've used the add-on myself and I highly recommend it. You can customize the sun, atmosphere, stars, clouds, fog, and more. The add-on also provides some outstanding sky presets, such as daytime and sunset, fog and haze, Mars, and even retro wave. You can also change the time of day just by rotating the sunlight. Check out the add-on with the link in the description, and by purchasing the add-on through my link, you'll be helping to support this channel. Alright, so as I mentioned before, you can download this free Robot Arm 3D model with the links in the description to follow along with the tutorial. So the first thing that I'm going to do is apply the transforms of the object, because this is the default pose that I want for the robot arm. So after I rotate the robot arm, if I want to bring it back to its default pose, this is the default pose that I want. So I want to apply all of the transforms. So press the A key to select all the objects, and then I can press Control A, and I'm going to click on all transforms. And this is going to apply the location, rotation, and scale. Now if I press the N key, that's going to open up the side panel, and I can click right here on item. And you can see because we applied the location, rotation, and scale values, the location is set to zero, the rotation is also set to zero, and then the scale is set to 1. So this is the default transforms of the object. Now when you apply the location values of any object, it's going to put the origin point in the very center of the 3D scene. And on default, if you click right up here on the transform pivot point, on default it is set to median point, so whenever you rotate an object, it's going to rotate from the median point. So if I just select any of these objects and hit R to rotate, you can see it's rotating from the object's origin, and the object's origin is that little dot right down there. And all the object's origins are in the center of the 3D scene. So what we can do is we can change the location of the object's origin, and we can put the object's origin where the joint is. And then that way when we rotate the objects, it'll rotate where the joint should rotate. 
So let's start off by rigging the ball and socket joint. So this first object right here is going to control the entire robot arm, so we're just going to leave this how it is for now. Now the next object in the ball and socket joint is this object right here. And you can see with how I modeled this object, this circle right here is at the same place as this circle right here. So what we can do is we can set the object's origin to the center of the ball here in the ball and socket joint, and then we can rotate this and it'll look like it's rotating around the ball and socket joint. So how we do this is we select this object here, and we're going to press the tab key to go into edit mode and press the A key to make sure everything is deselected. So I'm now going to hover my mouse over this sphere right here and I'm going to press the L key and that's going to select all of the linked vertices. So the entire sphere is selected. So this is the very center of the ball and socket joint. So this is where the ball and socket joint needs to rotate. So what I'm now going to do is press shift S and I'm going to hold down the shift S button and it's going to bring up a pie menu and I'm going to move my mouse down here to cursor to selected and then let go. And this is going to bring the cursor to the center of our selection. So I can now press the tab key to go back to object mode. And what I can do just to show you is click right up here on the transform pivot point, and I can change this to 3D cursor. So if I now rotate this object or rotate this object, you can see it's rotating from the 3D cursor. And so that's how the ball and socket joint should rotate. But I don't want to have to move the 3D cursor around every time I animate this. So I instead want this object to automatically be rotating from this position. Now, right now, if I click right back here on the transform pivot, pivot point, I can change this to median point, and you can see that the origin is still right down there. So I'm now going to place the origin where the 3D cursor is. So make sure you're in object mode, and I can click right here on object, and I can click here on set origin, and then I'm going to click on origin to 3D cursor. Now when I did that, you can see now that little orange dot there is in the center there. So now if I press R to rotate, you can see it's rotating correctly. And you can also double tap the R key, and that's going to enable this trackball rotation and that's great for rotating the ball and socket joint. Now something else that has happened is the location value has changed. So this is now not the default location of the object because you can see the transform location z value is now turned up to like 5.1 and that's because we moved the object origin so now the location has changed. If I wanted to clear the location of the object I could press alt g and that would clear the location values and so now it's going to bring it right down there and you can see the location is now all set to zero but i don't want that because i want the default position to be right up here so i'm going to press Control z to undo this so to fix this problem to fix it so that it doesn't move down here i can lock the values with these lock options so what i'm going to do is click and then drag down and i'm going to lock all of the values. So this way, with this object selected, if I press Alt G to clear the location, you can see it's not moving because the values are locked. Now I also don't want to be able to scale this object, so we do want to lock the scale, but we actually don't want to lock any of the rotation values because I do want this object to be able to rotate by 360 degrees. So I'm going to click right here to unlock all of the rotation values. So I can press S to scale, we can't scale it. I can press G to grab we can't move it but if I press R to rotate we can rotate this around so now it is moving correctly and if I press Alt R that will clear the rotation, Alt G that will clear the location, and then Alt S and that will clear the scale. And you can see it's still at the default position. Now this object is going to control the rest of the robot arm. So if I move this object or rotate this object or scale this object, I want the other objects to follow along with it. So this is where parenting comes in. So we are going to parent the objects at the end of the chain to the next object, and then that object will be parented to the next object, and that object will be parented to the next object object and so on until we get down to the starting. And so that way this object will be able to control all the other objects. So how we parent objects is we first select this object here, then we're going to hold down the shift key and we're going to select the parent object last. So this is the object that we want to be the parent object and then this other object here is going to be the child object. So we have the child object and the parent object. So first select the child object and then shift select the parent object. And remember the parent object is going to control the child object. And also I know that this is the last object that was selected because it has a yellow outline whereas this object has an orange outline. So now to parent this, I can press Control P, and that's going to bring up the parent settings, and I'm going to click on Object, Keep Transform. Keep Transform is just going to make sure it keeps the transform that it is right now, so the objects will stay where they are. So I'm going to click on Object, Keep Transform. 
So I can now select this object here. This is now the parent object and I can rotate it. I can scale it and I can move it around and you can see the other object is following along with it because this is the child object of this object. But then this object, it can still move around on its own. So I can rotate it. I can't scale it or grab it, but I can rotate it around and it can move on its own. But then this object will control this object. And then again, remember, if you want to reset the position, you can press the A key to select all of the objects, and then you can press Alt-R to clear the rotations, Alt-G to clear the locations, and Alt-S to clear the scale. And now the robot arm is back to the default position. All right, so that is it for the ball and socket joint. So the next joint that we're gonna be creating is this one right here, and this is basically like an elbow joint, and it's only gonna rotate back and forth, so it's only gonna rotate on the Y axis. So the first thing that we wanna do is set the origin to where the joint is, because if I rotate this, you can see it's rotating from the center because that is where the origin is. So I'm gonna press the tab key to go into edit mode, and we need to place the 3D cursor where the joint is. So I'm going to click right up here to go to the face select and then I can select this face here and then I can hold down the shift key and select this face here because both of these faces is where the joint is so it's going to rotate right in the center of that joint so I can now hold down the shift and s button and I'm going to move my mouse to cursor to select it and then let go and that way the 3d cursor is in the very center there so I can now press the tab key to go back to object mode and then in object mode I can click on object let's go to set origin and again we can click on origin to 3d cursor so now if I rotate this, the origin point is in the center, and so that's rotating correctly. Although we need to lock the values, because you can see if I rotate this, it can rotate this way, but we only want it to be able to rotate like this. So if you hit R to rotate, you can then hit Y, and you can see we only want to rotate it on the Y axis. So what I'm going to do is click right up here on the lock, and then we're going to drag down to lock all the values. But then the rotation Y, this is where I want it to rotate, so I can just just unlock this value. So now if I press R to rotate, you can see I can't rotate it back and forth this way. I can only rotate it this way. And then also, just like before, when we centered the origin point to the center of the joint, you can see it actually changed the Y and the Z values right here, but we locked them. So this way, if I press Alt-R and Alt-G and Alt-S, it's going to stay at that default pose. Now, this object right here, I want this object to move with this object, and these pieces are going to be connected. They aren't going to rotate. So I can actually join these objects together. So I'm first going to select this object, and then I'm going to hold down the Shift key and select this object last. And then I can press Control J, and Control J is going to join the objects together. And I selected this bottom object last, and that way this top object will be joined into this object, so it still has the properties of this object here. So that way I can rotate it, and it's going to rotate correctly. All right, so that is it for the elbow joint. So we now have this joint right here, and this is basically the wrist on the robot's arm. So we want to rotate this on the Z axis, and it's going to rotate around, and that's also going to move this part right here to rotate around. Now this object is symmetrical all the way around and the joint is in the very center of the mesh. So what I can do with this object selected is just click on object and then set origin. And this time we can just set the origin to geometry because the geometry is the very center of where it's gonna rotate. So we don't need to use the 3D cursor. We can just set the origin to the geometry. And again, you can see this Z value moved. So we need to lock these values. So I can click and drag and lock all the values there of the location. And then also the scale here, I don't wanna be to scale it so I can click and drag to lock the scale values. Now if I hit R to rotate, I only want to rotate this on the Z axis. So what I can do is lock the X rotation and also the Y rotation. And then if I rotate this around, I also want this object to move with it because these objects are going to be connected. So I can first select this object and then hold down the shift key and select this object last and I can press control J to join them. And that way this object will be joined into this object. And then also something that I forgot to do is I actually forgot to parent this object because if I select the base and press G to grab, you can see it's not moving along with it. So what I want to do is make this object the child object of this object, and then this object is already the child object of this object. And so that way each object will move the other object. So I'm going to select this object here, and this is the child object, and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the object that I want to be the parent. So again, I can press control P to bring up the parent settings, and I'm going to parent object keep transform. So this is the child, so it can still move on its own, but then the parent object is going to move the child object. So that is working great. 
And then again, press the A key to select everything, and you can press Alt-R and Alt-G and Alt-S to clear the values. So I now want this object to be the child object of this, so select this object and then hold down the shift key and select this object last, and I want this object to be the parent object. So I can now press Control P and let's do object keep transform. And now we can just check to make sure this works. So I can move this around. I can also rotate this and then I can rotate this and then also I can rotate this object. All right, so that is looking great. So I'll just press Control Z to undo that or you can just clear the transforms. So we now just have these two objects to rig. So to rig these two objects, I'm gonna select this object here and I'm gonna press the H key to hide the object. And this way the object is just hidden from our view. It's still there, but it's just hidden from our view. And we can press Alt H when we want to bring the object back. So let's just hide this object for now. So you can see with these claw objects, the rotation point is going to be right here. So this is where the joint is going to be. So I'm going to press the tab key to go into edit mode. I'm going to select this right here and then hold down the shift key and select this right here. And you could also just select one of them if you wanted to, but I'm going to select both of them. And that way when it centers the origin point into the center here, the origin point will actually be in the center of these two pieces. So again, to center the 3D cursor to the selection, I can press Shift S. Let's move our mouse down to cursor to select it and let go. So now the 3D cursor is in the center there. So I can tab to go back to object mode and let's click on object and set origin and origin to 3D cursor. And if I rotate that, now that's rotating at the correct spot. Now, again, we need to lock the values because I only want to be able to rotate this on the Y axis. So you can click and drag down to lock all the values, but then I just want it to be able to rotate on the Y axis. So on the rotation Y, I can uncheck this. And now that's rotating correctly. So let's do the same thing for this object. So select this object, press the tab key to go into edit mode. I can select this face hold down the shift key and select this face and then I can press shift s let's go to cursor to selected and let go and then again press the tab key to go back to object mode we can click on object and set origin and origin to 3d cursor and then again we want to lock these values so I can click and drag just to lock all these values and then I just want to unlock the y rotation so you can click on the lock right there and now that's rotating correctly so I can press alt h now to unhide the other object and I now want to pair these two objects to this object so that when this object moves the claws are going to move along with it so we can actually parent these both to this object at the same time so I'm going to select this object because I want this to be a child hold down the shift key select this object as well and then lastly hold down the shift key and select this object here and so these objects have an orange outline but this one has a yellow outline because it's the last one that is selected so I can now press Control P and we want to set parent to object keep transform. So these objects are going to be child objects of this object and this object is going to be the parent. So I can rotate this and it's going to move correctly. But then these objects can still move on their correct axis because it is this object which is moving the other objects, but these objects are still moving on their correct axis. So that is really it. That is the basics of mechanical rigging in Blender. So once you understand the basics of how it works, it really is quite easy and you can rig pretty much any mechanical objects in Blender. So again, just to recap the method, you want to center the origin point to the center of the rotation of the joint. So wherever the joint is rotating, that's where you want to center the origin. Then you just need to lock any of the transform values that you don't want it to use. And then you can just parent the objects to other objects so that these objects move around the other objects. So you could now animate these objects just like you would animate any other object in Blender. So you could maybe make an animation where the robot arm moves down and maybe picks up an object or something like that. Or you could also attach the robot arm to a robot character that you've created. And if you'd like to learn the basic of animation in Blender, then I have an animation for beginners tutorial. You can check that out with the link in the description. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, if you'd like to learn how to create sci-fi robots in Blender, then I have four free robot tutorial courses on my YouTube channel, and there are all of these robots right up here. So you can check out those robot tutorial series with the link in the description, and we use the same rigging method to rig all of the robots. And if you found this video helpful and you'd like to help support me and this channel, I will also have links in the description to my Gumroad store and my Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. And I really do appreciate your support. It really does help me to keep creating Blender tutorials and content. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for watching.